Hello and welcome to today's devotion. Uh, today we are looking at the final chapter of Proverbs, Proverbs 31. It might be quite familiar to some because it is uh, where we find out all about the Proverbs 31 woman. It's a great read, you should definitely check it, the rest of, of the chapter out. Um, I actually got stuck on verse 8 and 9. <laughs> Um, no matter how many times I, I read it through, this is the, the part that really stuck out to me. So, um, I mean, first of all, what an incredible book Proverbs is and how applicable the the wisdom in it is, even to this day. When it was written, it was such a, a different landscape to the world that we live in now, yet so much of it, not well, all of it, is, is still so relevant and so applicable to us today. And thank God for that. <laughs> the final chapter of the book and it starts off with some uh what my bo my bible actually at the top of the chapter says some inspired utterances from king lemuel's mother and um i hope that one day things that i say to my children will be referred to as inspired utterances um we'll see <laughs> but i just want to read you verse 8 and verse 9 and then i'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I feel um, the spirit of this verse is and how I feel like it's really um, spoken to me and hopefully it might inspire you too. Verse 8 says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and needy. I looked into uh, Proverbs a bit in terms of word count and there are 176 references to of the word poor uses of the word poor in the book of proverbs um just proverbs alone so across 31 chapters we're talking about five times per chapter roughly that it, it's brought up the, the idea of the poor and how we're supposed to treat them and i think it just really shows us god's heart for these people for this this portion of society that is so often marginalized and forgotten and the last to receive help and the last to be heard um, they are very much at the forefront of God's agenda when he's talking to us through the Bible. Uh, and I love that. It's a constant reminder the whole way through this book. Um, and it's been brought up so many, in so many other devotions, this, this idea has come up. So it's obviously very important to God. And so it should be incredibly important to us. Um, we're increasingly, I don't know about you, but I am increasingly bombarded with uh, from every angle, the news and your social media and conversations at work and everything that we're seeing and it, it being exposed to, um, we just are bombarded with the injustice that people are facing, not just in our own communities, but across the world. Um, and on a daily basis, we are privy to, to information that is heartbreaking and gut-wrenching and I have to be honest, I did, especially throughout last year, I really did find it difficult to not feel powerless, really, as to how I could help or, or do anything practical to, to change any of these situations. Just the magnitude of them all just seemed so overwhelming. And I definitely came to a couple of points where I was just thinking, where on earth do I, as an average person, even start to make a, a tangible difference? To any of these situations and i know we can we can pray we can donate we can um we can sign petitions and we can we can definitely affect change in certain areas but i got stuck on the part of verse 8 that says for the rights of all who are destitute and i just thought god all is a lot you know that's a lot <laughs> in today <laughs> this day and age all of the destitute that's a huge proportion of of the world and so yeah Needless to say, I think it leaves a lot of us feeling a bit overwhelmed and we don't really know how to how to feel effective, like we're doing the right thing or that we are, you know, that we are listening to what's going on around us and responding in the right way. Um, it can feel very overwhelming. And I felt God speak to me through a number of verses um, similar to this one. But this one really stuck out to me as I was reading through this chapter and I did feel a shift in my perspective. Um, over over a period of time <clears throat> sorry um, there are a lot of things that I can't do for those who cannot speak for themselves 
Um, I can't practically help every single destitute or poor needy person that I read or hear about or even come into contact with. I don't have the resources, I don't have the capacity. Um, and I can't defend the rights of every person that needs it on the planet. I'm no lawyer. I've watched Legally Blonde a lot, still don't think that qualifies me. Um, and so this word all, I feel like God really helped me re reframe it and, um, and reframe the spirit of the verse, I guess. So it didn't feel quite so overwhelming and more achievable. I love the fact that there's so many people, especially even in through our audacious church, but across the world who are burdened and called to be those who affect change on a much larger scale, government level, national level, worldwide level. Um, and thank God for those people because we need them. But for those of us who feel called to our neighbours, to our local communities, to our workplaces, our classrooms, our universities, our families, I believe that the spirit of this verse is that it starts with those right in front of you. And that's what I felt God say to me. Not that I wasn't really doing those things, you know, like trying to help where I could and, and, and try and be available for, you know, when people needed help. But it really helped me to be more aware of, of how I go about my day to day, because I believe it's calling us to be looking for opportunities to, to speak up for those that need it and to defend those that need it and to reach out to the destitute, to the poor and the needy, because those things do not mean Oliver Twist, please, so may I have some more. It's not just about um, that, you know, it's not just about being poor financially, but it's, it's about being poor in general resources available to the community. It could be emotionally. People are lonelier than they ever have been before. So, there are so many ways and there's so much need right in front of us. And we are so blessed to be part of a church that offers us so many opportunities, so many ways to practically outwork the spirit of this verse as I feel God kind of revealed it to me. Um, and ways that we can all get involved in, in one way or another. Um, a teams and, you know, the Macmillan support that we offer and, you know, things like food banks and safe families and there's so many opportunities um that we have at our fingertips really to get involved with and um, be able to affect and be Jesus hands and feet to those around us so I want to encourage you today with this thought that it starts with those right in front of you if you have been feeling overwhelmed with just the the negativity and the just how much of a mess the world feels like it's in we are the we're called to be the light we're called to be Jesus to to those around us so it has to start with those right in front of us so I want to challenge you today who can you reach out to today who can you encourage ask God to give you opportunities today grab a friend in a covid secure manner and look for opportunities together if you don't want to go on your own uh, and, and and look to try and help people. You know, there's so much that we can do that is literally right on our doorstep. Uh, so I hope that encourages you and I hope that propels you uh, in some way today. I know it's really uh, challenged me and really convicted me to, to really be aware of how I'm going about my day to day to make sure that I have not just got my head in my phone or my own, in, in my own world, but really looking for opportunities to to help other people and, and be Jesus hands and feet to them and and, his, and carry the love of God to those people. So let me pray for you today. Jesus, I thank you for the person watching this, God. I thank you if we fall into any of those categories that we need other people to reach out to us and we feel like that's not really happened. God, I pray that today, uh, this week, this month, that the answers would come. I pray for um, blessing and favour over their lives. I pray for that divine connection, that right person, that you would connect them um, so they can receive the help that they need and experience uh, that, that practical outworking of your love, God. Uh, and for those of us who who want to be these people that go out into our, our just in our everyday lives, going around looking for opportunities and, and being available uh, to to be your hands and feet and to to reach out god that we would be awake and alert and ready to be those people today 
this week, this month, this year, that we can make such a, a difference in the lives of people around us right on our doorstep. Uh, and God, I just pray you would bless us today um, and that you would be with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, whatever you're doing, and we'll see you soon.